Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh right. my God. How are you feeling today? Fine. Me too. Yeah. We made it. We did it. We, we went out for St. Patrick's Day. It's actually St. Patrick's Day right today. Now. <gasps> but we went out last night and, and me and Jerry are not go outers. Mm-hmm. So this was a special occasion mm-hmm. because um, my friend was having like a hurrah. So we went to it. Yep. Our friend. Fuck. <laughs> I laughed so hard because she posted that video of me. And somebody commented this was me. Sierra's friend Nicole. Nicole. Not Jerry's. Not Jerry's. Definitely not Jerry's. Definitely not Jerry's friend Nicole. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think Our it friend. was Friday. I texted you and I was like, what are you doing tomorrow? And you're like, well, we can't record tomorrow because I made plans with Nicole. And I was like, I know I'm also invited to those plans. So I will also see you out. I didn't know that. I do know she asked me, she was like, do you think Jerry is coming? And I was like, oh, was I supposed to invite her? Because no, I didn't. she had mentioned it to me. Well, and then I was like, I don't know, because like, yeah, yeah, child yeah. care issues. Yeah, it was yeah, hard yeah. for me to find someone to watch soybeans. I haven't. My since- sister and I, man. Yeah, we be trading. Yay, we are each other's are, rock right now. That's kind of amazing. I know, it's um, very Full House. It feels like it, female right? Full House. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. But yeah, me and Corey realized like because he said you could go out with your friends. That's fine. I'll stay here and watch the kids. And then I was like, oh my god, we've never in the time to- history of us being together mm-hmm. have we gone out together for St. Patty's Day. And he was like, really? So then I was like, it's kind of my mission now. Mm-hmm. Um, it was fun. And it was really, really fun. Yeah, we had a good time. We And then we came home and smashed Taco Bell that gave me fucking diarrhea at 4 a.m. <laughs> like, you would not believe. I got home last night and I had ordered um, pizza for mm. the kids. Mm-hmm. And there was leftover pizza. And I was just smashing it. And I was like, this is so fucking good. This mm-hmm. is the best pizza I've ever in my life. <laughs> ever mm-hmm. in my life. But I will, I will have the shits today. I think I've pooped twice so far. Yeah, yeah. I, I normally my hangover cure is a shit and chips. Yes, it's a it's a good old poop. Yeah, and salt and vinegar chips. And I've done the poop, not <laughs> the salt and vinegar shit. chips. And it's almost like my body's like, I'm gonna keep pooping until you get me these salt <laughs> and vinegar chips. You know I need these chips. I know. I'm sitting here right now, like clenching my asshole. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, I'm drinking again because that cures mine. Is it smart? Hair of the no, dog. But it is hair of the dog. And I never get drunk. I just drink like two. And then for some reason that fixes it. Not recommended. I don't recommend. It's not doctor recommended. No. And I'm not or a prescribed. Doctor. And I don't think that it's good people recommended. <laughs> I'm a bad person. <laughs> That's I'm the bad to. guy. Where do you think hair of the dog comes from? I actually know this. Okay. I, I actually do know. I feel like we've actually talked about it on Probably. the podcast before. But Tell me again, because you just said something yesterday from the podcast, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I said it. And then I said that I said it to someone who was like, yeah, I heard about that on the podcast. And then it, Jerry was like, that's hilarious, because I was sitting here like, this is the first time <laughs> you've ever told me this. <laughs> this brain is an Etch-a-Sketch. We've been we doing just... this for a fucking long time, too. So like, if I told somebody for you four years ago, how the hell are we supposed to remember? Anyways, hair of the dog, I think, comes from rabies. So it was like either a, uh, like, what's the word that I'm trying to say? Not a myth. What's the, like, a legend, urban okay, legend kind urban of thing? Legend. That, like, if you got bit by a dog with rabies, you were supposed to cut hair off the fur of the dog and, like, ingest it. Ooh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let me see. Two, two, two. Oh my God, crazy. Crazy. Um, I saw one, two, three, four, and one, one, one today. Oh my God. I know. Uh, let me see if that's I'm wearing my two, right. two, two necklace. Because I might just be making shit up, <laughs> to be honest. Listen, the I- <sighs> ingesting hair could make me throw up right now. Mm-hmm. Like whenever you get a hair in your food and you pull it out and you're like, that's incredibly long. How oh, did I not I see lied. it before it went in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Are you so wrong? No, I'm I'm almost right, but instead of ingesting it, you're supposed to put the hair in the wound. Ew. I mean, wor- that could be arguably worse. <laughs> no, I mean, if I had the choice to either eat it or put it in my wound, I'll pack my wound with dog hair. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I do, just naturally, because <laughs> I got fucking dog hair everywhere. <laughs> An accident. Mm-hmm. So the, the whole phrase is like the hair of the dog that bit you. 
So the dog that bit you in this sense would be alcohol because you're hungover from it. Uh-huh. So you're treating it with the hair of the dog that bit you with some Got more it. alcohol. That makes sense. Yeah. This isn't our normal day. So if we seem like we're out of it. It's you're hungover. It's because we are. It's because we're all fucking turned around. So this week... What we're going to do is more stories. Yay! Yay! We, we got a mashup. Oh, I did a little bit of a mashup, but this time I leaned more old school okay. scandals for our mashup. Hell yeah. And well, we have more. I did, I probably put together about 12 to 15 of them. Heck yeah. So we have more for the Patreon episodes. Heck so if yeah. you want more of what we're going to do right now, go to patreon.com slash ladies and tangents and, you know. Just find Watch find that stuff. Shit. <laughs> um, also, you are. We say mashups, but I think now after the show, we should change it to a smurgisberg. Oh, this is a smurgisberg. <laughs> that is so. We're true. having a smurgisberg. I I swear, guys. I don't know if we said this in last week's episode because I've, I just said my brain is an etch a sketch right now. <laughs> but did. it. I want to quote the entire show mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. and so. It's hard not to knowing people are going to watch it, but then I think it's kind of fun that you guys will see moments in the show where you're like, oh, that's what they're saying. Like, mm-hmm. that's where that came from. That's where Schmergisberg came from. Or, he's my first day boy. <laughs> like, those are all from the show. Yeah. Um, so, hey, Texas, we're coming. Texas. Next week, Houston. Houston? We got a big, we got, we got big. Oh my god! I am fucking looking at you right now. Venue. Side eye. We Look got a at big my, venue for I'm you. I'm side eyeing the hell out of you because right now we're gonna be echoing in that venue, <laughs> and we need you to fill that bitch up. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna to- be real intimate unless you guys fill that bitch up. We need it to be loud in Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. <laughs> hell yeah! And that's what I know. So tickets are. I on heard sale. Beyonce is gonna be there. That's her I hometown. Don't, I, that's a rumor, but I heard it. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> I, did hear I think it. Beyonce is gonna be there, and I think Ted Cruz for some reason <laughs> wants to go. <laughs> I don't support that one. But. I think he was trying to escape some cold weather. He's there's like, I heard, I heard there's fire here. And we were like, sure, you can come. Yeah, you that's will our song. be the sacrifice. <laughs> it's the song that we'll be debuting. That's the fire for the show. Oh, and that's, that's a little one. secret. That's a little secret. Houston. <laughs> anyway. You'll know if you come. Mm-hmm. Go to ladies dot ladies dot Go com. to ladies <laughs> dot com. com. No, ladies and tangents. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need a jingle. I know. Uh, and you can purchase your tickets there. Please come. Mm-hmm. Come with us. <laughs> Same time, Z's. Oh, my God. How about freaking last day, whatever. My husband was like, oh. yeah, you ever go online and watch, have to watch your wife tell another man to come on her? Because I did. <laughs> That's not what I was we like, said. Okay, context is important here. <laughs> and also... I said to come on us. I stand by that. (laughs) I stand by that. I wasn't just saying me. I think that if he watched that video, this is what he would look like. (laughs) The face he would give us. I agree. (laughs) All right, here we go. Are you fucking ready for this shit? I've never been more ready in my life. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my God. I have stuff to tell you. I I had things too, but, uh, but they've all escaped my brain. Guess what I did on Thursday. What? I got a mammogram. Oh my God, how are your tits? Fine. Do they smash them like pancakes? First of all, they do one at a time. Did you know that? That's nice. She picked it up like it was a taco. (laughs) Okay. And she set it up on this table. And then she pressed this button and this little clear yes! thing squi- comes it down. Smooshes it. And she's like, okay. And I was like, I mean, I guess. <laughs> so she lowers it a little bit more. And then underneath, the, she lifts the table up. So she just crank, crank, crank. And then she goes, now take a breath in. Hold it. And it's like, chicken, 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 chicken. Takes several pictures. And then she just, <laughs> lets my boob <laughs> breathe. Okay. What's it look like afterwards? I mean, my boob. But so it goes back to normal? Yeah. I don't have like sandbags for tits. <laughs> like I don't have to like <laughs> massage it out. But I they actually do- don't know <laughs> what people with like bigger boobs is like because mine are oh, just like true. itty bitties. So they're always just I did say what happens small. if they pop them? Yeah, <laughs> I'm scared. Feel- well, people with silicone implants have to get that done. That's true. That's yeah, so no. scary. Yeah. She looked at me and she goes, is there a chance you're pregnant? I go, no. <laughs> and then I realized how aggressive I said that. <laughs> they probably but, get one of two answers with that. It's probably mm-hmm. like, um, no. 
or it's <laughs> no. Why the fuck would you say that, Helen? <laughs> Absolutely not. But so they they take two different kinds of pictures. They take a real real top down situation, mm-hmm. okay? But then you have to. They do a tilty guy. Okay. Okay. So she tilts the machine, and I had to lift my boob up this way, and I had to extend my arm and grab the machine. What? Oh, yes. So it's I've pushing had one it of those. like that. Oh, wait. No, maybe I haven't had. I've never had mine squished. I've just oh, had yeah, it, it's, felt, it was squished. And then they did feel a lump. <laughs> yes, <Sorry>. Mike. <laughs> they did feel a lump. So then I had to get a, um ultrasound yes. th- thing on my boob and then That's they did a biopsy thing. and i was fine but i've i've never gotten a mammogram after that and now i'm realizing i definitely should schedule that because i think you're supposed to start like in your 30s right the only the it depends on if you have breast cancer in your family right if you have breast cancer in your family you're supposed to start 10 years um before the first person who was diagnosed okay, and makes i sense. think the first person who was diagnosed in my family was 39 okay so i should have been doing it for yeah since i was 29 right I, I was having babies so right that didn't happen um but i went to the gyno mm-hmm. on wednesday i didn't mean to make that aggressive noise I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Oh. yeah girl it's just a weird time to clear my throat <laughs> I went to the gyno on Wednesday. Health's important. And I was like, hey, I, I need my yearly. Yeah. And um, she's doing a check on me. And, and I remember saying before I went, I hate going to doctor's appointments like this that happen like once a year. And mm. it's not like for something where you intentionally went. It's yeah. just kind of like, hey, I need you. To, we're going to see. give me a once over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Could you just check all the parts? And you're supposed to wait a week to find out if everything's okay or not. And like, maybe they'll call you. Maybe they won't. No news is good news unless, unless they <laughs> forgot <laughs> or your results got lost, which mm-hmm. has happened to me before. And mm-hmm. I called and I was like, so I'm good. Right. And they, they were like, we did lose your results. And I was like, why that's, wouldn't you call me? That's what happened with my chlamydia. Oh my God. <laughs> I had to call them. I was like, I must be in the clear. They never called me. I call them and I'm like, so I'm Just good. Right. And they're like, no, no. <laughs> actually you need some medicine girl. <laughs> you got that clap and you, yeah. yeah. Um, I've talked a lot about my chlamydia in the last 24 hours. Well, that was a, a little bit of that was me yesterday. <laughs> I did bring it up at a dinner. <laughs> Not mine, though. No, mine. <laughs> yeah, Grow just, up. Chlamydia is like the best dinner. Talk <laughs> with Especially when you're. I notice something when I have to be in like a dinner or like a outing with new people around. Mm -hmm. I'm like, let me tell you guys about my (laughs) that one time I got chlamydia. (laughs) I'm like, let's see. What can I say to these people to make sure they never want to fucking hang out with me again? And then that's accidentally what I do. Well, okay, it's a real it's a real like uh, what am I trying to say? It's a real palate tester <laughs> well it's something tester yeah it yeah. like lets me know are you fucking cool or not? <laughs> yeah 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 um well i mean the last time i think my fear is legitimate because the last time did i say what my fear was i always feel like i'm gonna go and i'm gonna die they're gonna be like hey turns out three months to live nice uh, knowing that's you. my fear last time i went they're like you've had a tampon in here for a month <laughs> so this time i go <laughs> and she goes recover from that. she she checks my boobs uh-huh. and then she goes okay i'm gonna check your neck and she goes hmm <gasps> why would you <laughs> hmm. she goes um your thyroid is enlarged have you um have do you have a primary care physician and i was like i do she's like they never mentioned about your thyroid and i'm like well, we did a blood panel just to make sure that <laughs> and everything came back fine. And she goes, I think you need an ultrasound. And I'm like, <gasps> oh, God. Amazing. And then she's like, and also you're probably going to want to schedule that mammogram. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. How long do I have? <laughs> Could I have any more going on right now? <laughs> That's so, oh, my God. Wait, so you don't know the results of your mammogram. I don't know the results of my pap. I don't know the results of my mammogram. I don't know what's up with my thyroid. Oh, my God. I, and it's an election year. I'm not doing well. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy shit. What yeah. was your word for 2024? <laughs> Balance. <laughs> it feels like the scale is really leaning on one side. We're going to need to balance it out. I know. We're well, going to need a fair, little bit of good news You here. know what? I think my house and tour... Sure. Has been such good, good news. news that they're like, we got to kill you <laughs> to balance this out. <laughs> Fortunately, it's the death for you. <laughs> you said balance? Oh, well. Okay. 
Big rip. Say less. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I hope everything comes back. <laughs> I'll keep you guys updated. No Please news do. is good news, though. Okay? Hey, if yeah, I yeah. Just keep showing up, you know I'm fine. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I wow. think that's all I have for you. In a week, this is going to be a real bummer if it's something I bad. actually had two more stories for you. One has been a, a couple weeks old. Mm. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Probably because I was concussed. Why? Because I went to get <laughs> tissue paper <laughs> out of the garage for a birthday present. Okay. And I was like, I know exactly where this tissue paper is. My garage is just an absolute fucking nightmare. Yeah, okay. It's, it's like, scary. <laughs> it looks like if people just dumped a bunch of stuff off at Goodwill and they haven't gotten around to organizing <laughs> it, that's my garage. But I knew that there was tissue paper out there. So I went and I grabbed it. The funny thing about that is, though, is like it's organized chaos because I, will, I know where it is. I will see a room like that. But if it's my room, I'm like, I know where everything is. Every last thing this. I know where it is. Mm-hmm. I had to lift up the hot tub okay. to get it. <laughs> sure. I knew it was underneath the hot tub. So I grab it. I'm doing this position where like I'm standing on one foot. The other foot is elevated to like tilt me. For sure. Balance. Balance. <laughs> Balance. <laughs> this is your word. I grab it. And I'm so impressed with myself that I just turn around (laughs) and there's a bike hanging and the fucking handlebar goes directly into my eye. Oh my God, that's right. Cause you fucking Snapchat me and you had like a black eye and I was like, what the fuck happened? I had a black eye and it cut my eye. It was bleeding. It was bleeding. It was bleeding. Into your eyeball. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so people know I'm getting a divorce and now I have a black guy. <laughs> this <laughs> looks bad. I do need to get ahead of this. And like the two times I've had black eyes, I said, oh, uh, a lawnmower fell on my face. <laughs> and now I ran my face so fucking fast into a bicycle that was stationary and on the wall. <laughs> It sounds like they a lie, kind of but those are like both bullshit. true stories. Both very true stories. Well, that's like the last time that I had like a severe bruise on my face. I was like, I just went for my phone charger too fast. <laughs> and I misjudged where my nightstand was. Yeah. And I just fucking slammed head first into it. I had a bump on my head and it hurt really bad. And I was like, where'd that come from? Oh, yeah. I headbutted the fucking shower <laughs> like the handles on the wall dude sometimes we just be I'm, we're a little clumsy a little spatially unaware we are other time okay last story i have for you okay i'm here for it spatially unaware <laughs> okay so my car yells at me mm-hmm. all the time it's got like parking parking lights around it or whatever yeah. and it's just like beep 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 beep, beep. <laughs> if i get too close to something does. oh my god it's aggressive but as soon as i get into my garage again there's so much shit in there it's like i feel <laughs> like you're gonna hit something <laughs> for sure you're gonna hit something Fucking quit. so i just ignore it because sure. i know i'm not gonna well <laughs> right before i came into the office the other night to record that ad yeah. i start backing up and i hear something that sounds like an explosion after i ignored the beeping yeah. <laughs> it's, it was like beep 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 <laughs> Oh and I'm like, what the fuck did I do? I thought I hit the garage. <laughs> so I pull forward and I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do when I hit stuff. Giggling to myself. Like, what the <laughs> fuck else am I going to do? Oops. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. <laughs> I saw something that said hot girls hit curbs. And I was like, for sure. Yeah, dude. <laughs> for every for single sure. time. That and when I'm pulling in and I can just hear the curbs <laughs> scraping against my nice rims. It's like. <laughs> I'm like that's going to leave a mark. Awesome. Good, good good. So anyway, this this hot girl also runs over bicycle helmets. Oh. Okay. <gasps> you fucking popped the bike. Helmet. I did. I did. Forrest had this kitty cat bike helmet. Oh, no, no more. No more. Oh, I fucking no. killed it. I ran over it and it just Pop! That was the styrofoam. Oh my god, the- I love to watch those videos on TikTok. You yeah. ever watch those where yep. shit just runs over stuff and then it's like cuckoo. Mm-hmm. I really mm-hmm. like the ones that are like the jellies, you know, and then they just like I like the people who react to the bottles rolling down the steps. Those are good, too. Mm-hmm. Someone did that, and they said, like, what um, signs yep. they would be. Yep. And immediately before the one was cancer, I was like, cancer. And I was like, yep. <laughs> he said, I was like, I knew it. Because it, like, it. rolled slowly and then fucking exploded <laughs> <laughs> at the end. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I like those. That actually is correct. That checks out. Anyway, those are the stories I had. Okay, well, now I have stories for you. Okay. Not my own, but these. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. You. I think that probably things did happen this week, but I. It's been a blur. Oh my God. Bit of it's a blur. Been, here's the thing about being on tour is whenever I'm home, it is just an absolute blur. It just has been a lot of hanging out with my family outside. Yeah. Like, even I know a multiple. 
Noah's not doing great in math. Yeah. He's having a hard time, so we're doing homeworks. However, he just got all A's for the third yeah, nine he weeks. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. On a roll. On a roll, baby. So I was so proud of him because I know that he's been struggling, but he's like really working. And I'm, I have always told him, even if I don't know what I'm doing and I don't, when it comes to math, I will sit there with you and try to help right. figure it out. I'm not going to do your homework for you. And as long but as I you will are be there trying. as a support to bounce ideas right. off of. So we did that for like four hours the one night. So it's Aww. been a lot of homework, but yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> and now, now we have some stories. Now, some of these are kind of like scandally funny but also there's like a spooky matrixy Element. and then there's also some um just funny shit ones because that's who we are it's as a people. Schmirgsberg. so what do you want what do you want first i'll let you choose i don't care there's one you're not allowed to have because i saved it for the end but i can't remember what that <laughs> one is now <laughs> well then i don't want that one that's not good all right you know what i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you the give it to me gentle that's all i know and i will the time the FBI called to say they apprehended my husband for being on their most wanted list. Are you ready? This is such a good story, and it's written in by a viewer, but it's her mom's story. So her mom actually wrote it, and it's <gasps> incredible from first person. So here we go. That's like that's like um the the alien mom yes. and, and she was at the Charlotte show. Yes, she was. That was so cool. So cool. So fun to meet. We people. didn't know if you ever meet us and you've written in, just let us know because like that's so. Someone cool. Someone wrote like, it on a napkin. Yeah, that's right. And put it on the stage. And I go, Sierra. I think there was. I was very sick at the Charlotte, sh like before the Charlotte show. I just was ass sick and mm -hmm. I puked one time and I was like, Oh, what yeah. is up with this? It's not good. Um, but. When we were walking back to the green room, I was like, I think someone wrote us a note on stage. And she goes, no, I think that's that was to say where to like not touch the wires because <laughs> I'm blind. That's the thing, you guys. So it was right in front of me, but it was over some wires. And so I looked down and I was like, got it. Don't step on those wires. <laughs> so that must be from the people that work there to be like these wires. Be careful because they're not taped down. No, we ended up getting the the napkin yeah. afterwards, and it was yeah, that was so cool. Mm -hmm. so we didn't meet them right, but we just saw the napkin. That yeah. was fucking cool. So write us napkins, put them on stage. Maybe we'll see them. Maybe we won't. Yeah. Who knows? We'll collect them at the end. I like it. Okay, here we go. Hey, ladies, my name is Sasha. Pronounce Sasha, but there's a C in it, so they say the C throws people off. And go ahead and share my name. I will. <laughs> the story below is from the POV of my beautiful mother, Corey, with a K. I love and that. And I just said last night that Corey was like one of my favorite names for a girl, Aww. but I couldn't do it because I was like, her dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Corey with a K O R I. So cute. So cute. So cute. She approves of this message be shared with the world, but specifically with you ladies, because she gifted me two years of the fuckable bunny <gasps> status on Patreon. Oh, thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. We love a supported mom. Supported? <laughs> supported we love a well. supported mom. <laughs> but also supportive. I got bras for the first time. Okay. <laughs> Thursday was a whole boob day for me. I went and got new bras, and then I <laughs> smashed them in a machine. You did. I did. Hey, and that's what you need to do. Anytime you get a mammogram, you should treat yourself to new bras, because mm -hmm. your tits just deserve it and i'll tell you what i didn't know how big my boobs were yeah they're giant yeah you got new boobs yeah she's a d new boobs holy fuck that makes sense because i was at a c at one point after my pregnancy i think i'm back down to a b i put them Hell yeah i put them in a bra and I, they were like touching my chin and i was like this is aggressive <laughs> this is too much <laughs> this is a lot <laughs> anyway it's funny without further ado quote the time the fbi called to say they apprehended my husband here we go this is from mom from, mom. from now on Back in December 2013, I was distraught. My husband at the time had taken a flight from Amsterdam to Seattle. The flight had landed hours earlier, and he had not called me. His phone went immediately to voicemail, and none of my texts were answered. This was unlike him, and considering that he had just been in Europe for almost two weeks where his cell service didn't work, we had both been very excited to talk to each other. Finally, someone from the FBI calls me. The FB mother effing I. <laughs> I like that they wrote mother effing. <laughs> he stated that they had my husband in custody, and this was just a courtesy call that he had requested so that I wouldn't think he was dead. <laughs> and then it says parentheses, he knew me well, because that is exactly what I thought. <laughs> well, for sure. We are Mormons from Utah. Sorry about all the Mormon talk <laughs> on the Patreon. <laughs> 
He had never been in any kind of trouble with the law, and I was so bewildered. It was it was the FBI of the Lord. <laughs> he was in trouble with the Lord. <laughs> the FBI agent was not very helpful and couldn't give me any information. He told me I would be contacted later and not to leave my house. Uh- I forgot to ask how long. (laughs) That's such a fucking ambiguous thing to say. Like, why? Why? For what? Later that night, and after a full-on dramatic panic attack, my husband called. The FBI? I yelled at him. What is this about? Oh, it's awesome. (laughs) He replied angrily. Oh, wait. Oh, it's awesome. I expected to hear a story about possibly someone planting drugs in his bag or something like that. Nope. Murder, he (gasps) said. Just like that. Cue the full on freak out. Now I got to hear the whole story. So here it is. He landed in Seattle and the flight crew allowed him to be one of the first to deplane. He thought it was courtesy because he had a night like a, a connection. Yeah. He got right into the customs line and you can't use your cell phone until you get through customs. And back then you couldn't even use it on the tarmac. Um, so he's a rule follower and he kept his cell phone off the whole time. Well, That's not if he he's can... a male day oil. No, <laughs> well. The moment he cleared customs, he was approached by four large FBI agents who apprehended him and took him into custody. That's fucking so scary. I would oh, shit my pants. 100%. I'm going to look at everyone sideways now when we're at the fucking airport. I know it. This scenario right here is actually one of my biggest fears. And I'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. The facial recognition software had spotted <gasps> him as one of the FBI's 10 most wanted while he was in Europe. And they followed him from Spain to Amsterdam. When he got on the flight to the U.S., they had alerted the flight crew and the airport personnel. Imagine the person. He's just like trying to talk to the flight attendant. She's just like, (laughs) won't fucking look at him at all. Do you want something to drink, Mr. Mr. Criminal, sir? (laughs) Once he was in the interrogation room, they were asking him all sorts of questions, which he answered truthfully and couldn't figure out what this was about. He showed them his ID, his passport, driver's license, even his library card. (laughs) They threw his cards on the floor and said, give it up, Jason. We know who you really are. (laughs) Give it up, Jason. It sounds like my mom when we went to pick cookies up the one time. (laughs) Actually, it was Jason. It wasn't really. She goes. (laughs) Jason, Jason. <laughs> that's right. And he turns around and goes, what? what? <laughs> like, uh, no. <laughs> They're fine. Who made these cookies? <laughs> I don't know. He happens to look almost exactly like Jason Derrick Brown, a man who in 2004 pulled an armored car heist where he shot the 24-year-old driver five times in the head Oof. and stole around $56,000. And he's been missing ever since. To give you a visual... Both men look a lot like Sean Penn. <laughs> so oh, interesting. Yeah. Jason Derrick Brown's background has a lot of similarities to my husband's background. Both men were raised Mormon and served missions where they learned a foreign language. Both had family in both California and Utah, and both were avid skiers and Jeep owners. <laughs> Have you ever seen your husband and Derek, <laughs> Jason Derrick Brown in the room together the room at the same time? Yeah. Last place Derek was seen was the Salt Lake City Zoo in 2008 before he went off the grid. So all the questions just cemented in their minds that they had the right guy. Right. My husband. My husband kept saying, I'm not him. Check my fingerprints. To which they said, what did you do to alter your fingerprints, Jason? Why are you so adamant about us checking them? (laughs) I'm concerned about the FBI now. (laughs) Truly am. Hey. Hey. Come on. God damn. How many women did you have on the force and how fast could they have disproven right. your theory <laughs> simply by social media? <laughs> That's the truth. Many different office officers were brought in to question him. All of them believed they, quote, had their guy and would look at each other, quote, knowingly after almost after every question he gave. Long story this short. Fucking guy, this fucking this guy. This fucking guy. He's getting away with it. Long story short, he is not Jason Derrick Brown. Jason Derrick Brown is still at large. I don't love that for us, <laughs> but good. Or is Side he note. at home <laughs> he with you? <laughs> Side note, because my brother thinks it's funny, he made a website about Jason Derrick Brown oh my and God. included my husband's name as a known alias. <laughs> that Halloween. That's a genius <laughs> cover. <laughs> You brought the brothers in on it. That Halloween, I dressed as a cop and he went as himself 
Jason. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is this is too far. <laughs> the, the last sentence. Also, he's an ex-husband now, but not because he was a murderer. All the best, Corey. Oh, Corey. Corey. I'm what happy it freaking... ended that way. I, I mean, not that you got a divorce. Not well. well hey, unless because I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. But at the same time, I feel like maybe he was. Ever you ever heard of hiding in plain sight? Uh-huh. <laughs> because uh-huh. I think maybe maybe he doth protest too much. <laughs> doth protest. He protests a little too much. I agree. Oh, shit. Okay. He's like, I'm not Jason Derrick Brown, but I do play one in every <laughs> every <laughs> movies, <laughs> in the movies, online, during holidays. You know, I just be living my I'm life. I'm just Jason like- Derrick Brown on every day that ends in Y. <laughs> <laughs> you down with JDB? <laughs> yeah, you know me. <laughs> you do know me. It's me. I'm him. <laughs> All right, here we go. This one is called The Time I Shit on My Best Friend's Roof. (laughs) And I apologize. If you don't like shit-related things and you get grossed out easily, this one is not for you. Not for you, babe. I was just talking to someone about all of the places I pooped that weren't bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And I even got the map out and, like, zoomed in. And I was, like, right here on this street (laughs) about this house. And he was like, wait a minute. I think I did landscaping for this house right here. And I'm like, no, different houses. Different houses. That's fine. I didn't What's cross paths. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. It starts out. What's up, bitches? My name is Jess. She, her. This is a story that my best friend still loves to tell. So in high school, I had one friend and we were inseparable. She lived in the neighborhood across from mine. Walking distance, bestie? Definitely a recipe for disaster. Her name is Jana. I hope I'm saying that right. Let me set the scene. My family was poor as shit. (laughs) Seven of us lived in a two-bedroom duplex. Whoa. Jana's family lived in a huge house, and her parents were in their 70s. So we could have literally gotten away with murder. And that's why we were hanging out with Jason Derrick (laughs) Brown. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Needless to say. We need this house. We have way more people than they do. (laughs) Needless to say, we spent much more time at her house than mine. Of course. Mm Mm-hmm. As, mo- as most high school owners do, we smoked hella fucking weed. <laughs> there was a family-owned gas station not far from our house that would sell us cigarettes. Oh, and I forgot to say that her dad was wild. Rest in peace, Bill. Aw, Bill. He would hide 40s in the mountains of shit around their house. Her mom was a hoarder, so her mom wouldn't find them, and then he could drink without her knowing because she would lock him in the garage when he got drunk. <laughs> Bill, they're in their 70s. Remember, that's kind of iconic. That's fun. That what fun. fun? They're like, I'm bored of you. How can we spice this up? I'm going to lock you in the fun. garage when you're drunk. <laughs> really? Helen, I'm going to hide 40s around the house and your fucking shit that you won't throw out. Uh, that's, that's I kind love. of aspire. <laughs> that is love. And that's love. So one night we were in Jana's room, which was on the second floor and had a window that opened up to the roof of the front porch. We had just smoked the devil's lettuce and we were chowing down on apples and Nutella out of a giant red mug style soup bowl. You know Mm -hmm, what I'm saying? mm -hmm. This detail is going to be important for later. (laughs) Oh, no. And we were drinking some nasty ass beer from her dad's secret stash of 40s. (laughs) I'm assuming. (laughs) We decided we were going to go out on the roof to smoke cigarettes before we went to bed. About halfway through the cigarettes, I started feeling an old rumble in the tumble, if you know what I mean. I do. I have to shit, I say to Jana. At this point, we smell like menthol cigarettes, 50 cent beer, and fucking reefer. (laughs) She tells me I cannot go to the bathroom because it will wake her mom up and we'll be caught. The solution? Yep, the giant mug we were just eating Nutella out of. But You're going to put your own Nutella in that mug. But it's going to smell, so you have to go out on the roof. Bitch, what? So out I go onto the roof to shit in a fucking mug. <laughs> Up on the rooftop, shit in mug. <laughs> I want you to know I'm going to read this verbatim how it's written. Okay. I very carefully <laughs> <laughs> do my business and wipe my ass with a Taco Bell napkin. And then we decide to launch the solid human-sized turd into the yard because surely it will pass as the dog's. 
who's a fucking cocker spaniel. Oh my god. <laughs> well, guess what? The next morning, we overhear her mom say that she found a giant shit <laughs> And she wondered what kind of dog the new neighbors had because it surely couldn't have been from their dog. 14 years later, and her mom still uses the shit bowl. Oh my God, you didn't get rid of the shit bowl? <laughs> oh no. How horrifying. You watch this <laughs> woman. Wait, how long? What? How long has it been? 14. 14 so years. 84 years old now. <laughs> Eating out of a shit, honestly, Shipple? impressive, because if that didn't take her out, hey, what an immune system. That's what I'm saying. Anyways, <laughs> love you guys. Can't wait to meet you in Nashville. So we met you, Jess, you sick bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would have told us you sent this story in. XOXO, Jess. I think someone did tell us that, oh, that might be it. This might be the one. <laughs> I gave you a hug, Jess. <laughs> He's sick. You're Wrong. sick. You're sick for that. You should have brought right. the bowl. I'd have signed it. I'd have shit in that bowl. <laughs> I would have it on stage. You just shit right into the bowl. Okay, ready? Oh, this wow. one's kind of spoopy. Spoopy? Yeah. This says, was that my first Matrix glitch? Ooh. Hey, ladies. My name is Alex. She, her. Absolutely use my name. <laughs> <laughs> we actually also just talked about, was that with you that I talked about girls named Alex? No, that was me and Nicole. We said, because we were talking so fucking annoyed of you. <laughs> Sorry. We were talking about um, like boys' names for girls that we yeah. love. And yeah. she was like, I fucking love the name Alex. I know if you're an Alex that I'm going to want to hang out with you, but you could also probably beat my ass. <laughs> like, yeah. I love you. Yeah. Like I, I might want to be in a relationship with you, but also, also I want to be you. a little scared of you. <laughs> yeah. All good things. Okay. And I'm pooping my pants with my first story I get to submit. This is a story that I'm 100% placing the blame on y'all. Oh, great. Sorry. Love that. Either I just experienced my first glitch in the matrix, I jumped timelines, or my brain is working overtime in the dream department. I'm a new member to Patreon. <gasps> Thank you. And I've been binging all the episodes like any other sane person. I just finished the episode from 2021 about listeners experiencing a glitch in the Matrix. Mm -hmm. And well, now I guess I get to add mine because it just freaking happened last night and it actually has me tripping effing balls. You ready? Uh-huh. So I guess here we go. A little bit of backstory to start with. Today, I have a dentist appointment. So she's writing it as it happened. It happened the night what? before. She's writing it as... This just happened last night, okay? Is it weird to think, like, one person could jump timelines, but we didn't? What are you saying to me right now? <laughs> you know what I mean? If we did it? Oh, like, I don't she know. hopped into this timeline? Well, no, you'll But did we exist in the other one? You'll see. You'll see what happened. Oh, Let me no. just, I'm going to, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Today, I have a dentist appointment at the asshole of dawn. I'm a little bit. Of the anxious type surrounding the dentist, so I make sure to have my shit together the night before. What? Do you have a dentist appointment? No, I know this story. What? I, I don't know where you're going, but my, in my brain, I'm like, I, you have read this to me before. I just read it last, this last week, so I, and it was just written on March 5th, so I feel like there's no way that we read it before. It's very new. Go ahead. I'm for, this is fucking weird. This is fucking weird. Okay. So I have to make sure my shit's together the night before making that last night. I did all the things. I set out my clothes and shoes, made a mental note of an easy breakfast, got to bed early and made sure I had my trusty sleepy tea in tow. So I wasn't left to my own thoughts and was easily taken over to dreamland on a cloud. Okie dokie. After finishing the tea, I go into my cocoon of cozy and start the transition from conscious to knocked out. <laughs> my boyfriend decided to wake up from his living room nap and join me. Everything was great, grand, wonderful, normal until I wake up. Alex, why did you wake? I would love to tell you. <laughs> I have my phone set up so that when I plug it in or unplug it, Siri reads my battery percentage. Well, Siri reads my battery percentage. And that's what woke me up. If my cord was weird and the connection was lost, my screen should have lit up, like when you unplug your phone. But it wasn't. The screen was black. Bitch was just talking with a black screen out into the open void of nighttime slumber. I tap my phone and I see it's only 1220. Now this is just the thing that woke me up. Right after, I'm talking right after. Siri talked, then boom. I see a shadow on my wall. But not just a normal shadow. 
I live on the first floor, so if a car goes past, I get shadows on the wall. But this shadow was different. I have string lights in my bathroom because I'm a grown adult afraid of the dark. (laughs) The bathroom is right across from my room. This shadow was like someone walked between my bedroom and bathroom. And guess what? The only two people in my apartment were the two in my bed. I sit up and I'm shitting bricks. I say to my boyfriend, my doors are locked, right? I locked it. I know I did. He said, yeah, you locked it. It's locked. Why? I say, I saw a shadow. Him. It was probably just one of the cats. Me. Knowing damn well the shadow was big, like person big. No, it was big like a person. (laughs) Him. Do you want me to check? No one's in here. Me. No, it's fine. It's definitely not fine. And I'm so spooked. (laughs) I roll over and try not to think about someone murdering me or worse, that someone could be letting my two cats outside. (laughs) As a cat owner, I fucking get that. I roll over so my back is towards the door. If I have an intruder, I don't want to see them. I go back to sleep like normal. I wake back up and check my phone again. But this time it's 4.30 in the morning. Remember my stupid early dentist appointment? Well, my alarm is set for 4.45, so I decide just to get up so my alarm doesn't wake my boyfriend. I grab my pile of clothes that I had set out the night before and I head into the bathroom. I'm in the middle of changing, hunched over, just finished peeing, trying to get my coldest tits pants on when my boyfriend gently pushes the door open. He was asleep on the couch. Hold on. (laughs) Hold on. This poor angel looks so, so sad. He said, wait, can you cuddle for a little bit before you leave? Of course, I have to oblige to his puppy dog eyes. I say, yes, of course, let me finish getting dressed. Homie has to pee, so we just exist together in the bathroom. He made a comment about me wearing a bodysuit to the appointment. I was struggling to button it. And I explained how it was going to be a bit chilly. Hello, spring in the Midwest. And it, and it goes with the outfit and blah, blah, blah. So we go lay down. Completely normal. I set another alarm. I end up falling asleep, and I have a dream about frosting a wonderful-looking cake. <laughs> it's a cute little star cake with strawberry frosting. I wake up from that. Why? Because my boyfriend gets up. And well, surprise, now I have to go pee. I was sleepy and confused because I'm back in my pajamas? Question mark. We lay back down. I ask what time it is. And it's 1.40 in the motherfucking morning. The entire last paragraph did not happen. What? (laughs) Oh, I have fucking full goosebumps all over. But it felt so real. I felt myself leave the warm bed and walk to the cold carpet. I felt myself pull the bedroom door closed a little bit. I felt like I was actually peeing. No worries. I did not piss my bed. I heard the bathroom door squeak open like it does when my boyfriend pushed it. I felt myself getting dressed and laying back down. I felt myself struggling with the bodysuit button. I felt the warmth of the bed meeting my cold clothes. I felt that I had my hair up in a claw clip already. How did I feel this? Because my boyfriend bonked it when he laid down to spoon me. So many fucking yeah, super intense yeah. details. Trigger warning for vagina things. Yep. I even remember when I peed that there was a lot of discharge. And I swear to God, I remember thinking, wow, that's a lot of discharge. I bet I'm ovulating. <laughs> I had a freak out when he told me it was only 140. I said, oh, my God, I just had the weirdest dream. My boyfriend said, yeah, you said there was a shadow person. At, the, at this time, I couldn't explain the dream until we woke up for the last time at five. My boyfriend swears I'm probably just stressed, but this was the most wild encounter I've ever had at night. Well, here's what I need to know. Did your alarm go off? What? The first time or the second time? No, 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 no. When, at 4.45? Yes. <gasps> you got to write us back in. I don't know. Did your alarm go off? Because in, in the paragraph that mm-hmm. nothing happened, your alarm, alarm didn't, didn't go, go off. off. Yeah. You shut it off. Mm-hmm. Mm. So did your alarm go off? Mm. That's a great question. Because you got up at five. Yeah, then. we need you. We need you to. Please Where answer. are you? Where I are you at? Know. Where, Where are, are you? you? <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend swears. Oh, I'm probably distressed. Okay. I will say that my tea is valerian root, which does give me wild dreams. But dreams that you know are dreams. Like I feel right, like right, you right, know right. when you wake up and you're like, oh, that was a dream because it just felt a little off. Yes. As opposed to like feeling things. Yes. You know what I mean? Yep. Hello to that dream I had where my boss, a veterinarian, told me I was doing surgery because you've watched enough. You know what you're doing. Like, doctor, I'm your receptionist. <laughs> so anywho, but go ahead and give me those that scalpel. I got this. 
That's my story. I hope it's at least entertaining for you. P.S. I'm seeing you guys at the Minneapolis show and I do a happy dance every time I think about it. Love you ladies and I hope your days are filled with happiness and joy. Much love to you guys, Alex. Fun! That one is so creepy to me. Yeah. Because I feel like... Alex, I I need to know. I feel like I do believe it was more than a dream. I kind of do. For sure. Because that's fucking like... You had a whole experience. Yes. And it seems so normal. Like, I've had dreams where I'm like, oh, I swore that I just woke up because I was getting up and getting ready. But even then, I could still feel when I wake up like, oh, that was a fucking dream. God yeah, yeah, damn yeah. it. Dream within now I have a dream to situation. actually get up. That's annoying. Yeah, I've had many a dream within a dream moment. But like not even realizing, oh, that's fucking so weird. Okay. Like remembering going back to bed. Like normally if it's a dream within a dream, I didn't go back to bed. I right. just like woke up again and I was like, oh, I'm a- Damn. Yeah, I thought I already did that. <laughs> Fuck. I thought I did all of that shit that I wasn't looking forward to doing, and now I got to fucking do it all. Yep. This one is dating horror story. That time my mom disappeared while on a date. Hmm. Hey, ladies. My name is Haley. She, her. You can share my name and all the other names in this story. I think they're changed. The year was 2007. I was an awkward middle schooler living in small town PA. For context, my parents have been separated for years. It was a Saturday night. My dad and sisters were out of town for a swim meet, so I was staying at mom's house. She had plans to meet a man named Mike for drinks, which meant that I had the house to myself and my little introverted ass was so excited. (laughs) I sat on my mom's bed and watched her do her makeup. She had this perfume she'd wear for special occasions that is still one of my favorite scents. She left for her date and told me she wouldn't be too late and to keep the door locked. As soon as the door was shut and locked, I dived onto the couch and turned on the Disney Channel, and there was a That's So Raven marathon going, so I was stoked. All was well. I fucking love it. About two hours into my Disney binge, our home phone rang. I jumped up and ran to the kitchen to answer it. I was surprised to hear a man's voice on the other end. He introduced himself as Mike, my mom's date that evening. I don't like that. He said my mom had gotten up to go to the bathroom and never came back. He said he'd called her cell, but she wasn't answering and that he couldn't find her anywhere at the bar. I don't like that you're calling. I don't like the child the house. Yeah. Fucking weird. That feels so inappropriate. Okay. Yeah. Well, hold on to that. I told him I'd try calling and hung up confused. I immediately called her and I got no answer. I kept calling a few more times with the same results. My siblings and I were latchkey kids and I was no stranger to unanswered phone calls. So this didn't bother me much at first. No shade to my mom. She was always busting ass, raising three girls as a single mom. Anyways, I put the phone on the coffee table and resumed my marathon. (laughs) You're like, that? don't know where she's at. Can't be my problem. (laughs) Sorry. When the phone rang again, I snatched it up and answered it. And it was Mike. He asked if I'd gotten in touch with my mom. And I I told him I told him I hadn't. He started telling me how worried he was and began asking me if my mom had any enemies or anyone that wanted to hurt her. What the fuck? That's quite a jump, That's Mike. So funny. I thought maybe Mike. she didn't want to hang out with you. Mike, you're being really weird. At that point, my tiny kid brain imploded at the thought of my mom being in some kind of danger. Why would you say this to a child? Yeah, I don't. This Mike is unwell. So fucking it's strange behavior, Mike. I'll tell you that. I tried racking my brain for an answer, but I came up blank. <laughs> Try to figure out if my mom's got enemies. <laughs> like one time fuck? she cut someone off at the grocery store. Could be him. Mike said that maybe someone at the bar she works at followed us here, and I'm just so worried for her. I hung up with Mike so I could continue calling my mom's cell phone. I called over and over and over again. I can't remember. I feel like it's not Mike. I can't remember if I left her any voicemails, but I'm sure if I did, they were frantic. Eventually, Mike called back again to see if she'd come home, and when I said she hadn't, he suggested that I call the cops. So I did. The rest of the night is a giant blur, but I remember standing on the front porch in the cold talking to a male cop on the sidewalk. He was incredibly patient with me as I sobbed and shook while trying to tell him what happened. I was convinced that my mom had been mom napped and I'd never (laughs) see her again. Oh, never did it cross my 12 year old mind that Mike just sucked and my mom ditched him. When she finally checked her phone and saw my six million missed calls, she called me back. It turns out that Mike was just really, really creepy. And so she ditched him to meet friends at a bar down the road. You don't say. <laughs> ah, Mike, you, Mike, we got that vibe. I'm not going to lie to you. You're fucking real creepy. You're weird for that. When I filmed Your mom have any enemies? Because she's got one now. <laughs> and she Goodbye. better watch the fuck out. Call the cops. 
Bye. Because <laughs> I'm a killer. <laughs> You're fucking weird, Mike. My name is also <laughs> Jason Derek Brown. Jason Derek Brown. <laughs> oh my God, it's all coming together. When I filled her in, she just said, I'm fine. Now go to sleep and I'll be home soon. Thanks, mom. You're great for that. My relationship with my mom has been rocky my entire life. She struggles with things that she refuses to acknowledge or work through. Unfortunately, this caused a lot of trauma in childhood and into adulthood for me. I love her, but to protect myself, I love her from afar. Aww. Luckily, my dad is the most precious human being on the planet, and he's my best friend. Here's a picture of him on his wedding day. How cute is dad? He's adorable. So cute. Oh, my God. Anyways, that's the story. I hope you enjoyed. I love you both so much, and I'm so proud of everything you both have accomplished. See you in Portland. Fine. Yay. Yay. Keep being the incredible human beings that you are, Haley. Oh, thank Haley, you. Haley, thank you so much. We can't wait to see you in Portland. Tell oh, Mike I was to gonna say, never call us. Tell Mike, tell Mike he fucking sucks. Yes, I wonder Mike what Mike's rocks. doing now. I bet you Mike's divorced again or something. You, you think Mike I mean? got married? Yeah, people always marry a Mike. And then it never works out. You know what I mean? Mm. Somehow, I don't know how Mike's always trick people into marrying them. I could list they three get... people right now yes. who've divorced a Mike. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. And I might be related to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who they are. We'll talk about it later. That's crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. Four. Four. Mike's, Mike's always end up finding a woman that want, is like, I'll take care of you, Mike. And then Mike's like, actually, I'm the worst. <laughs> I'm Turns actually out, the worst. You thought, but I fucking suck. Thanks yeah. for the marriage. Thanks for the marriage. You know what? <laughs> I was, you and I were talking about names, and then I was talking with someone else about names and how they just give vibes. Yes. And and Mike is that just gives a, he's going to be divorced. <laughs> so Mike is a divorced dad name. Hundred <laughs> percent. I don't make the rules. It's just true. <laughs> it's just if you true. go by Michael, you're probably a golden retriever, and uh, you're fine. You don't think Michael? I dated a Michael, and I like him a lot. I think he's a good guy. Well, <laughs> we can cut that out. All right. Well, no, no Michaels either. <laughs> Fuck with the Michaels. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. just kidding. Stop yelling at me. God. <laughs> oh my God, everyone. Shut up. Oh my God. All right. I have two more. And they're kind of fun. So okay. I think that we'll, we'll have a good time. Okay. I hope. And if we don't, <laughs> I'm coming at you. <laughs> Jason Derrick Brown style. <laughs> this, oh my God. Pop, this pop, one pop. is Scandal. <laughs> scandal. That's nasty story. One time I peed myself, but with a fun little twist. Okay. Here we go. What's up, everyone? My name is Erin. She, her, 30 years old. I'm a first grade teacher, so I get my summers off, which is where my story begins. Every summer, I hyper fixate on a game that I play all summer until the school year starts, and then I never play it again in my life. I love that. Well, this past summer, I was obsessed with some fish game. Think Candy Crush, but with shells and squid. <laughs> okay, fair. That was me with the Kim Kardashian game one time. Yeah, hell yeah. I love a hyperfixation. My summer basically consisted of me rotting on the couch, playing my game, eating snacks, and hanging out with the dog, waiting for my husband to get home. Hell yeah. True bliss. Oh my God, that sounds actually amazing. So good. Anyways, there I was, playing my fish game when I got thirsty. I stood up to grab a drink when I realized, oh no, my shorts are wet. <laughs> I think to myself, huh, I guess I already got a drink and dumped it on myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only explanation here. Nope, there's no cup in sight. I stood there puzzled for a minute, and that's when I realized I just peed myself, <laughs> and I didn't even notice because I was so involved with my stupid little <laughs> fish game. I immediately tried to comfort myself as the horror set in. Everyone's done it once, right? <laughs> Maybe this is just a new being 30 thing. I'm on a new medication. Maybe it's a secret side effect and so on and so forth. Trying to figure out how I would have realized my bladder, how I would have released, <laughs> not realized, <laughs> released my bladder without noticing or feeling it. Once I talked myself into acceptance of what just happened, I took off my shorts to change. However, I was surprised to find that my underwear were completely dry. Well, except for the wet from my shorts that had soaked in. Okay, so now I'm confused again. <laughs> so I smell the shorts. No smell, so it's definitely, definitely not, not pee. pee. Are you sweating? Well, hold on. But they're soaked through. Soaking wet. 
got it. Sick bitch. He's sick. At this point, I'm just pacing around my living room trying to figure out what the fuck happened to me and how some stupid came could have me so immersed in I'm it sorry, that I wouldn't. I'm sorry, stupid came? <laughs> how I stupidly came all over myself without noticing. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. I just be like, oh no, I stupid came. Oh I just be dumb coming. <laughs> you ever dumb come? Oh, no, I honestly just cut them all the time. I dumb come, stupid came. <laughs> okay, so listen, stupid game. <laughs> okay, could have me so immersed. I'm crying. <laughs> in it that I wouldn't have noticed this happened. I change my clothes and head back to the couch. There has to be a clue. <laughs> Some clue that I might have missed. This wasn't just a little drip on my shorts. My shorts were soaked. I remember the living room has a camera, so I pull it up. Unfortunately, it only goes off when there's movement in the room, and seeing as I was rotting on the couch for <laughs> hours playing this dumb game, I probably didn't set it off. I still pull it up just in case. And what do I find? Me, sitting in the corner of my couch with my eyes glued to my phone and my dog. My dog, <gasps> who was piling toys around me in the couch. My dog, who goes to put a toy on my lap. And then projectile vomits <laughs> the entire contents of her water bowl onto my lap. <laughs> you... <laughs> And then back to me again, still playing my dumb little fish game, <laughs> blissfully unaware that I am covered in dog vomit. <laughs> the fact uh, that you smelled it, you just put your face in it. You put your face right in that. Ah, uh, mystery solved. So there you have it, folks. I don't know which one is worse, dog vomit or pee. Hey, leave it in the comments below. Which would you prefer? <laughs> But hey, the good news is now I know I still have control over my bladder. That's good. For now. If you read this on the pod, I might actually pee myself. Well, prove surprise, it. you're going to. Prove it. <laughs> I have some other silly stories that I can send in, but I think this one is my favorite. I love you ladies so much. Thank you for being my silly big sisters I get to hang out with on Tuesdays. Much love, Aaron. P.S. Sierra, I hope you got the silly Akatar bookmark I sent you in the mail. I don't know if it ever got there, but I just wanted to share my mutual love for the series with you. It did, and I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> That was incredible. Such a good story, right? I love that. The amount that I've, I feel like I, maybe other people don't experience it, but like the ADHD hyper focus that can literally take me out yes. to where shit can happen. And I'm like, oh yeah. Noah has told me that that, I mean, oh, I shouldn't maybe tell the story, but he I've was a child, but he's told me he was so immersed in reading before that he peed himself. It was like, I didn't even know what was happening. I've done that. Noah's was and I pissed. I've almost shit myself before. Yeah, and, like, and it's so not because I wasn't aware that I had to poop it's just because it was almost like I was locked in and I can't move on to task two, two which is yes. doing number two <laughs> until I finished this yeah I get so like the world around me is nothing and I'm just here mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you that's why I don't play the sims all the time because when I'm playing the sims that's what happens I will to defecate me. myself <laughs> I will shit my man I will dumb come <laughs> all over the couch <laughs> Oh my god, that might be one of the funniest <laughs> things that's ever come from this fucking podcast. <laughs> stupid cum. I stupid came. I stupid came all over the place. <laughs> you dumb. You dumb cum. You dumb cum. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, here we oh. go. I'll tell you, there's been times where I've had to pee really, really bad, and I have wanted, I've wanted to just do it. Like, who? <laughs> hey, <laughs> just piss yourself. Who cares? Just fucking do We've talked you're about that. You're not cool unless you be your pants. <laughs> you're not cool unless you be your pants. Also, Sierra and I have talked about this before privately, like pre-podcast. I don't know if we've talked about it on here, but there are certain times where I'll pee or poop and it feels like I'm coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, where yeah. I'm just like, oh, that's a good poop. You know what I mean? Oh, that's good. <laughs> I did it in Marshalls the other day. Not in a public restroom. Yeah. Especially if you've been holding it for so long. Maybe that's what you're dumb just coming shuddered is. And you're like, oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> dumb coming. Is when you have a really good pee or poop that makes you shiver. <laughs> you should just be dumb coming in Marshall. <laughs> you, you ever just be dumb coming in Marshall? It's sick. <laughs> And then we move on to the patron. <laughs> I 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh my god. Tickling rats and tackling Alzheimer's. What? What? <laughs> okay, wait. I do need you to say that one more time into the mic. <laughs> can you even do it again? Because that was know. the funniest shit I've ever heard. Sierra so said that after this, we're going to record the Patreon one, but she said it. Patreon.com. Patreon.com. <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I don't know how I said it the first time. The way that we kept, where were we? Were we coming back from? um... Oh yeah, (laughs) oh yeah, dumb coming. (laughs) We were dumb coming back from where? From Nashville on the plane, and we kept saying, (laughs) anytime. (laughs) This is what happens when we travel. We're normally on like fucking running on zero sleep, and maybe sometimes we've had some alcoholic drinks Mm because we have flights delayed. What are you supposed to do? I don't think we did in Nashville, though. No, we didn't in Nashville, but I think this originated from when we had that delay, so we stopped and we got those drinks um, before our flight because we were running on literally two hours of sleep, and we were so fucking tired. And we kept saying, anytime they would say that was prohibited, we kept saying, it's prohibited, baby. (laughs) (laughs) That was prohibited, baby. (laughs) Don't do that, that's prohibited, baby. And then I don't know why it was just like, you know, you know, oh, when you get prohibited, bibbity, prohibited, bibbity. Hey, you ever just, funny. you ever just be silly? Yeah. Oh my God, you said something about the rats, so it reminded me of this. I did want to say this. This was part of it. Rats, rats, <laughs> rats. <laughs> this reminded me. We did get it. I wanted to shout this person out because we got a comment. Um, from a lot of scientists. Thank you so much, science community <laughs> yeah, and also yeah. geologists for showing the fuck out yeah. in the comments. Uh, but somebody, I love that they said, in answer to your thing, which was basically most of the things like the tickling rats and the fucking plant fevers, a lot of what they find out is actually an accident. So they'll have like a bigger goal they're looking oh. at, which is like she gave an example okay. of what it could be for the plants. Got thing it. could be like medicinal or whatever and then they end up finding little things that like oh. little bob ross happy accidents yeah that, yeah, happen. Yeah. that makes sense and that's how you find out oh shit this you this know what happens. i mean yeah because you're you're just spending all your time Got studying it. them so yep. you find out other things about them along the way along it's all the about way. the journey. journey you know what i mean not the desolation. Not the desolation. <laughs> i'll tell you what i know the difference between archaeology and paleontology Geology? oh yeah archaeology is historical artifacts the paleontology is dinosaurs fossils fuck okay but yeah <laughs> yeah fossils yeah yeah <laughs> you know why because noah loves like truly he yeah. wants to be a geologist like or paleo mm-hmm. he wants to do something with that and I'm i took like, a geology course my freshman year i was like i don't know if we i have anywhere it. in ohio that you can <laughs> you might have to move but like maybe for it. i don't know i'm sure there's something somewhere maybe he'll be a traveling traveling geologist rock That's guy fun. i love a rock guy okay here we go our last one, and this was that time I almost shit my pants at NASA. NASA? And I wanted to get, the, did you know that Did NASA's it grow seven in, inches? <laughs> Several well, inches? <laughs> could have. You know that NASA's in Houston? I'm really excited to go there. Maybe if we have extra I time. I thought NASA was in Orlando. It's in Houston. What's in Orlando? Disney. <laughs> no, there's a launch pad. Is there? I mean, there's probably launch pads, but NASA is in Houston. The space station is in Houston. The space station is in space. Well, <laughs> <laughs> fuck me. Wait I, a minute. Wait a minute. Go look it up. I'm gonna. Okay. <laughs> this Where story takes NASA? place in Houston. I'll tell you that. Where is NASA? I'm doing it too. <laughs> Washington, D.C. What? Well, what is NASA in Houston or Florida is what mine popped up. Exercises management over the NASA field centers, which I'm sure there are field centers. Where are NASA locations? California, New York, Fairmont, Pasadena, Houston, Texas. Okay. I just know that because someone just told me when we go and we'll... The Kennedy Space Center is in Florida. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Got it, got it, got it. Johnson Space Center is in Houston. Mm, Johnson Space Center, we want to see you filling up our Houston venue. (laughs) Hey, you better show out. Someone just told me that the Houston airport was cool because they have a lot of NASA stuff. So that's why I thought it was like located there. But okay. Now we learned something. We have more. It's all about the journey. It's It's all about the the journey. All right, here we go. We found ourselves along the way. Yeah, we did. And that's our friends we find along the way as well. Our dumb cumps. Our dumb cumps. (laughs) 
Stump cump. Stump cump. Hey, ladies. My name is Mackenzie Sheher, and I'm also a Midwestern hailing from Illinois. Hailing. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I really... Well, I've been saying what the hell so much, so I, I was just like, hey, hailing. What the, what the hell? From Illinois. What's up? I've been a listener since 2020, and y'all got me through the pandemic, so I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Anyways, this is a story about how I was this close to shitting my pants at NASA. Yep, that's right, the space station in Houston. All right, so let me set the scene. It's 2015. Nope, 2015. Why does that sound weird? 2015. 2015? That's also right. Do people right. say 2015? 2020? <laughs> 2020. I actually, I think I might be having a stroke. <laughs> My brain is Both like are correct. glitching. I know, but for some reason that sounded really fucking weird to me. And I thought that it's, people it's were going to make fun thing. of me. And then immediately my brain started shutting down because I started freaking out. It's the same thing. Like my, we'll just use my, my childhood phone number uh, as yeah. an example. So the last four digits were 8071, mm. but you could also say 8071. Got it. But it's the same number. Okay, cool. It's like 2015 or 2015. Got it. Okay. It's, it's 2015, my senior year of high school, and I just turned 18. That was also the year I decided to join my school's robotics team, mostly because I needed it to look good on college transcripts. Not me thinking dancing robotics. I'm like, oh, <laughs> sick. I can join those robots. Since I'm actually shit at school and needed something to make me look good. It was so much fun, though, and I made a lot of friends and learned new things. And with the added bonus of being able to travel all over the U.S. for robotics competitions. Fun. And, well, one of the places we got to go was Texas, and our school decided to make a little trip out of it. We had a two-day competition, and the rest of the time was spent going on field trips, and one such place was NASA. Now, I don't know if y'all know what NASA looks like, but it's basically a big campus of several spread out buildings in an out of the way location. So we're kind of in the middle of this wide open land away from town. Wide open spaces. Mm -hmm. Anyways, the coach, the coach bus dropped us off and we got to take a Oh, my God. I'm having a really hard time seeing the right coach now. bus. On. Is that like um like a big probably like a bus that feels like you're riding on a plane? It's got bathrooms and shit in it. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Yes. Probably one of those, like we took to Washington, D.C. Charter bus. Yes. That's the word I'm looking for. There we go. Um, Dropped us off and we got to take a behind the scenes tour of the facilities and see their workshop of some of their prototypes. It was all very cool to see and things were going great. Well, that was until lunch came. We took like an hour break from the tour and we had Chick-fil-A catered. I've never had Chick-fil-A before, so I was looking forward to seeing what the hype was about. So I absolutely down this chicken sandwich like my life depended on it. <laughs> so lunch finishes up and we go back to tour time with me being absolutely oblivious of what is to come. Lucky for us, but very, very unlucky for me. The last part of the tour is actually outside, far away from any buildings at an obstacle track. Great. The track is actually some kind of practice grounds for the Luna Rover. Fun. There will be a picture of it at the end. We have a picture. The Lunar Rover is this giant prototype car thing that actually that actual astronauts practice drive. Fun. Oh, I know. Sounds fucking neat. Why always, do you to, why? always in the middle of making one with Legos. Okay, cool. That's mm -hmm. fucking sick. We actually take turns and get to drive this giant thing, which is so fun. Everything is going great. I took a turn driving and had an absolute blast. Nothing could possibly ruin my mood, except all of a sudden my stomach just drops. You know what I'm talking about. Bubble that guts. feeling of absolute betrayal from your body. Mm -hmm. My guts start bubbling. My ears start ringing. I'm sweating from head to toe. My butt is clenching. My hands are clammy. I'm about to die. Knees I look are around, weak. Arms are heavy. Sweaty. <laughs> Whatever. I look around wildly, searching, praying for a solution. I spot a building in the distance, but it's an unfamiliar building, one we didn't tour. I tell my friends, hey, guys, I have to pee. I absolutely did not have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back to the bus and use that bathroom. They're all like, yeah, cool, no problem. And I at least solve one problem. No witnesses in case I don't make it that far. <laughs> yeah, fair. I start walking away when all of a sudden I hear, yeah, I have to go, too. I'll come with. Ooh. It was my friend's mom who was a chaperone. I don't know her. She doesn't know me. She's a stranger. The panic is setting in. I'm getting more and more frantic. The gas pains are excruciating. My willpower is weakening. My desperation is increasing. What am I going to do? I'm in the middle of nowhere, out in the open with a stranger. I start thinking of every possible way this could go wrong. The bus is far. I mean far. And you already know walking will make it so much worse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I'm clenching for dear life at this point. We make it away from the track and are now back to campus with the building. My guts are screaming at me for a release. I contemplate a security breach by sneaking into one of these <laughs> unmarked buildings. There, tell, when I, you're about to shit your pants, <laughs> I swear to God I could commit murder. Kill like, me. The things that go through my mind, I'm like, this is unhinged thinking right now it's nothing logical no is running it can't through your be head. it can't be because I you're in to survival release, mode i have to release these demons <laughs> that are dwelling within me They're and if you need to, to shoot me. me dead fine <laughs> then fucking do it do it um, you're gonna have to clean up the mess <laughs> you will because i will release my pals <laughs> immediately and i welcome it <laughs> i think of all the ways i can run away from this mom and disappear to start a new life <laughs> But by some unknown source, we make it to the bus. And you know when you get closer to the bathroom. Your butt knows. Your butt knows. The worst you have to go. Well, that was happening to me, but times a thousand. I'm praising the universe that I make it to the bus. I climb up the stairs and walk down the empty bus seats to the bathroom in the back. I go to open the handle and it's locked. Oh, I knew it. Why is it locked? What happened? I did everything right. Why me? <sighs> I hear a, I'll be out in a minute. Someone is in there using the bathroom. I let out a sob that I'm sure the girl in the bathroom heard. I sh the way this is written is absolutely phenomenal. I shakily walk back off the bus and tell the mom someone is using it already. She nods and thinks nothing of it. While I'm fighting for my life right now, I start pacing because at this point, it is going to happen. I am way past the point of caring what this mom thinks of me. <laughs> I started saying I need to go right now. I tell the mom I'm about to release and I might have to go in a bush or something. <laughs> to my left is a building. If I went around the back and shit in the grass, could I get away with it? What would I wipe with? How long would I be? Are there cameras? I'm 18 now. Would this be a felony? Will Probably. I go to jail? This is NASA. Surely <laughs> there are rules against this. Right when I was about to make the executive decision to go shit on NASA's lawn, the girl comes out of the bus bathroom. You know that bathroom scene in the movie White Chicks where the guy says, move, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally me to this girl. <laughs> Side note, the girl was a freshman and I didn't really know her. I shoved past her while actively pulling my pants down. To <laughs> yep. You got it. I slammed my aunt. My ass. I slam my anal ass down. I slam my ass down, and the door shut at the same time, and I just let loose. It's the worst shit of my life. It was coming Whoa. out of me like lava. Mm. Whatever was in that chicken sandwich came back for vengeance. About ten minutes go by, and it's not slowing down. I text my friend that I am not coming back out, and her <laughs> mom should probably find another. <laughs> You're going to need to tell your mom to move on. <laughs> Please forget, forget about, about me. me. <laughs> Leave me. I then call my mom, who, mind you, is back home in Illinois. I tell her what happened and how I can't get off this bus toilet, and I don't know what to do. She laughs, and she says she doesn't know what she's supposed to do about it, which fair, but I needed some words of encouragement to get through this. Mom. It's now been well over 30 minutes. I'm starting to become aware of my surroundings. The bus is hot and cramped. I already know it reeks. <laughs> also, who knows what kind of damage the girl before me did as well. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That's why they say, like, you can't poop on charter buses because it's just fucking. They're going to have to just gonna light the bus on fire afterwards. <laughs> it's it's done. Stank. Mercifully, my stomach is finished. I did. It did what it needed to do. And I was free. I clean up. Clean, clam up. I clean up, but sadly, there was only hand sanitizer in there. But the worst was over. I made it. I meet back up with my friends, feeling <laughs> hollow and defeated. I told them what happened, and we were able to laugh it off. But if only they knew how close I was to actually shitting outside. Chick fil A won that day, but I'm a survivor, and I'm stronger now because <laughs> of it. The rest of the day finished off fine. No more incidents. But we still had the long drive back to Illinois, and I can only hope the smell dissipated enough to be bearable for the people in the back. Fair. To Illinois from Fair. Texas. Oh, hell. If you made it this far, thank you so much for reading this story, and I hope you guys find it as hilarious as I do now. I did. Wow. I, I did. And I did. And I did. And I did. And I did. <laughs> 
Wow. So that's it. I Those hate, are our stories. Listen, I, I hate, hate <laughs> I hate that feeling. It's and the I know worst. exactly what you're talking I've done about. It before that's in not a car, the car and I'm like that's not the one you feel like you're going to come. That's not no. that one. <laughs> no, no, no. This one you feel like you're going to fucking die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've done that with an ex-boyfriend and I was like I'm going to I'm going to poop the one in the car you... and he was like I got an uh, there's an exit <laughs> Doesn't coming matter. up and i'm like no no i'm gonna we like, did that you, to you in nashville needs to be now <laughs> we did that to you in nashville remember did we were you? like sierra you gotta just run out of the car i did and run into this <laughs> gas station i ran out of the car he barely <laughs> stopped moving i ran into the street onto oncoming <laughs> traffic and i was like hit me yep. i don't give a fuck at this point <laughs> i'm going to shit my pants and you didn't even do it. What? You shit didn't even pants? shit. No. You came back out and you're like, ah, it's just farts. Well, no, it was a little bit. There was poop, but okay. the, not, a, a lot, not <laughs> enough. Good. That waited for me until the airport. And then I unleashed in the airport. Yeah. Thank oh. God. Sweet release. Sweet release. You know why? Because my body was betraying me that week. And I it finally caught up to me and I started being constipated. So the feeling of having to shit was there. Mm. But then the actual time to shit, nothing mm. happened. Never came. And I dumb come never. <laughs> Do you think there's a G spot in your butthole? Isn't there? What? <laughs> isn't there? Ah! Yeah, I think that's why. It, I think that's why sometimes when the poop is a certain size, you're like, oh, triggered it. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, and I'm pooping. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. all, right. all right. Do you know what's weird? Is that sometimes I feel that also. You know what's I... weird? <laughs> what's a bit weird? Sometimes I feel like I dumb come when I sneeze too. <laughs> Is that weird? No. If it's just a really good sneeze. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or one that takes a couple times, but then afterwards I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking dog. <laughs> like one of those little schnauzers that's like, <laughs> <laughs> my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh my God. The way I'm like, like freaky, mother like dog. Relax. <laughs> Why is it like mother like dog? <laughs> we do. I'm just being in the bag. <laughs> anyway, that's that on dump coming, guys. We hope, we hope you, you learned, learned something. A lot. <laughs> Take that with you. Put that on my tombstone and smoke it. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> hey, we love you so much. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> We're out. <laughs>